So what we want to do right now is to take um, the federal issues and, and go to the statewide issues that we've been working on here uh, from your uh, SoCal advocacy team. And we figured that the best thing we can talk about right after lunch when you guys are sleepy is public policy. So let's see, <laughs> Let, let's see if uh, <clears throat> we, we did a good planning here. So. So I'm going to talk a little bit about why advocacy matters, and then we're going to jump into the things that we advocate about, and I'm going to toss it over to Sri here. And I don't know how to pronounce his last name, too, so don't feel bad. So <laughs> advocacy matters. Guilty as charged. There you go. <laughs> so advocacy matters because of the fact that there are one of the two biggest drivers of change in any healthcare industry is technology and legislation. So in terms of legislation, just think about, go back to the creation of Medicare, Social Security, Affordable Care Act, now ICD-10 is coming, all of these big legislations that affects millions of people and costs billions of dollars, right? Same thing with technology. Electronic health record, uh, barcoding, all these things that we've introduced, CAT scans, that have radically changed the landscape of our industry. So, between healthcare, I mean, between technology and legislation, we have a lot to talk about amongst ourselves because we are the healthcare IT wing uh, in healthcare. So, in legislation, uh, as you guys know, passing legislation is like building a pyramid. Every brick, every conversation, every handshake, every time we make our voice known, that adds to our legitimacy and it also adds to our voice because. As in anything, if you want to be heard, you have to speak up. And the last thing you want to do up in Capitol Hill, and our friends can attest to this, the last thing you want to do is to have other people speak on your behalf, right? So we want to make sure that our voice is heard. And Shri and I literally go up to Washington, D.C., and we coordinate with the national office to have three main asks. And the reason why it's three, because you can ask for 100 things, probability of you getting something is really slim. But if you focus on three things and make it a national voice, then the probability of you getting heard is much better. So we want to invite all of you here. If there's anything that you guys want us to talk about, please reach out. Reach out to your HIMSS members. Um, I'm hoping everyone here is a HIMSS member. If not, I'm going to plug in the membership. There's an awesome membership team we have. Please sign up and be heard. Because again, if you don't speak up, you won't be heard. And the last thing you want is for someone else to speak on your behalf. So jumping into the three asks, let me toss it over to Sri over here. So, so let's talk about where we are today. And, and I want to give you guys a personal example. Uh, I had my records with one physician who I was seeing for many years. And uh, I, I moved out of state. And I was, was wanting to make sure that the records that I had was something that another physician could see. Should be simple, right? It's electronic. Oh, by the way, we got about 30 vendors. Nothing against vendors here. But we got about 30 vendors here, EMR, who are great, but don't talk to each other. And we all have something what we call HLN7. <laughs> ask, ask each of the vendors to pronounce that correctly. And they'll give you a different spelling, spelling for each of the same HLN7 because they all spell it differently. So naturally, it's broken. When we are broken, we know that, right? So here is what I did. I said, OK, I'm going to jump on this bandwagon and figure out how do I take this and make it interoperable. So I said, OK, I'm going to take a placard, like some of us do, and walk to the streets and say, hey, interoperability, interoperability, right? Not, nobody's going to hear us. Nobody's going to talk to us. Nobody's going to understand my problem. Nobody's going to understand your problem, because I bet any of you guys, you walk out of this, you walk out of the state and go to Vegas, you fall sick in Vegas, and try getting your data there. You got to abide by Vegas rules, right? <laughs> Nevada rules, right? And, and what, happens? what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, right? <laughs> Including hey. the record. <laughs> it, so guess what? California can never get your records. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Try to go a little bit farther, right? I don't want to go to Arizona. 
right? Arizona is a totally different ball game. Go further, Texas. My goodness. Try get any data out of that, that state. <laughs> Nothing against folks from Texas if you're. <laughs> but that, that's, that's our world. And guess where I was? I was on the East Coast. Man, that's a million miles away. <laughs> In healthcare, that's a million miles away. It's like we are on Mars. So I said, okay, so how do I get my records? And they said, you got to print it. I said, okay, I log into my portal, print it, and then give it to my physician. He said, I can't accept this. Why can't you accept this? Because this doesn't come from my system. Hey, by the way, that physician I saw went to the same college. Doesn't matter. You said it in the same school. Doesn't matter. That is interoperability for you guys. And that's my pain. So I started down this path with advocacy because I wanted to go down and do that. I wanted to understand how do we change the healthcare landscape, not for me, not for my daughter, but maybe someday for our grandkids. That's what I want to do. That's what I did. I want to take this and go talk to people and say, please change the system. Because it's the system that needs to be changed. It's not the people who it's not the people who are taking one data point to the other, but it's the system. That's what I did. And that really people wanted to hear. We've got friends in National Hymns who create an entire platform for us to sit down and have a conversation with some of our leaders. Senate representatives, we got we got Diane Feinstein's representative here. We we spent time with Megan, who is her counterpart up in DC, and talked about how do we change the way we think. How do we change the way we understand? How do we change the way we breathe? Because that's what we really need to do in healthcare. Let's talk about telehealth, right? I just talked to the guys. It's a fantastic love-hate relationship. <laughs> we love it when it works. But you go to the next state and use another physician from another state, boy, ask Medicare to pay for it. That's a tough part. So. God forbid you are beyond 65. I hope none of you are. But that's what happens. It's a, it's, a, it's a different situation when you go down to telehealth. Cybersecurity, oh my God. That says it all, right? How many incidents have we had this year? How many incidents have we had last year? It's millions of records. And then we blame the whatever from the east side of the world and then we call the East European folks having got my records. I can't believe it. They are more interested in our records than our physicians. Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> they get through interoperability much faster than we do. <laughs> Heck, they know HL7 better than us. Right? And we talk about PQRS, my goodness, another, another term that we data analysts want to love. We love data. We've got data all over the warehouse. But when the Chinese want it, they get it like this. <laughs> Try to get data from your servers. Nothing against the Chinese again. <laughs> oh, by the, way, the, by the way, the servers are made in China. I'm going to move on before I get a loss up here. <laughs> so I hope you're not sleeping now. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, I thought, OK, sure. Um, so HR 270, the Flex IT Act. And one of the things that we talked about when we go to Washington, DC, is the meaningful use attestation period. And one of our asks, and actually Sri, he, he talked to. 13 offices over two days about this topic. Uh, and we eventually got the different offices to call up CMS and ask them, how many folks in my district have uh, attested to this regulation? And persistent calls actually led CMS to reconsider where they stood. And again, remember where I talk about uh, legislation being building a pyramid. It's, it's every call, every handshake, every conversation matters. So, uh, and Jeff also talked about that we're going to have a final ruling 
soon, but CMS is leaning, leaning more towards the, the three-month period. So never discredit uh, what small folks can do when they say it over and over again. They're called telemarketers. <laughs> And we talked a little bit about uh, telehealth, so I won't bore you with that. Uh, the only update that we have is that HR 691 that was referred to the Subcommittee on Health on February 6th. So what we do on our spare time is we, make, we, we keep track of these things, and we want to report out to you, because we know you guys are busy, where we are at with all of these legislation. So we're going to do a better job at uh, coming to different HIMSS events and reporting out where we at with legislation that matters to you. Sounds like a commercial. <laughs> and um, we talked about the law. Uh, this was the HR2, and this is a really hefty law. But one thing I want to point out is our position uh, that we have stated as HIMSS is that this gives an opportunity to advance interoperability. And again, it always goes back to sharing data. Um, actually, it was uh, the founder of HL7 that said, uh, in order for interoperability to work, we need to have standards. Unfortunately, standards are like toothbrushes. Everyone has one and no one wants to share. <laughs> so I think he captured it well. And we need to start letting go of, of this is my data, this is the patient's data. And imagine if the banking system worked that way. When you go in and you wanted to just you know, get cash, and they say, oh, uh, we don't have your account information. Oh, but you're Chase. Yeah, but you didn't sign up with us. So go back to the bank you signed up with, get the money there. You're in another state. Imagine, it's, it's unthinkable. But unfortunately, that in a way is where we are in healthcare. You know, the data isn't being shared, and that data not being shared doesn't help anyone, except for, as Sri said, the Chinese. Um, <laughs> so on that note, uh, we really want to encourage you guys to be part of advocacy because this is not just a committee within our chapter. This is something that we all need to do. Because again, if you don't make your voice heard, someone else will speak on your behalf. So make it a point. Check out our newsletters. We always have uh, links to uh, different legislations that we're following. And every now and then, we have action items where you click on it, and it opens up. You put in your zip code, and it sends a letter to your representative about what we are working on. So on that note, we will open it up for uh, question and answers, and we'll let uh, Sabina share a little bit about um, her role and what they're working on, and we'll go from there. How are we on time, Tim? We're good. We're good. Okay, cool. Sri, any last words? Not about the Chinese. So, <laughs> so one of the things that I'd ask you guys is, if you have stories of struggles that you have in healthcare, that will, if you think technology will help, talk to us, please. Because we have the ability, we have the platform to go and talk to representatives, both Senate House and, of course, Sacramento. We have the ability to go do that. If you talk to us, we can at least take those. And they listen to stories which we, when we talk to them. Megan, one of the, one of the folks from uh, Fine Science Office, was really like, OK, how do we help you? What can we do? That's the type of questions we got. So they want the information. I mean, all of a sudden, healthcare is becoming personal because somebody is sick, one of the senators was sick, and he was like, wait a minute, why can't I do this and why can't I do that? Because now it's personal. It's no longer somebody else, right? I mean, they were looking at how do we get the data from the VA because he was a veteran, and how do we get that data from you know, the, into the federal hospital system, right? This, this, all of these questions back and forth was, was being asked. Why? Because it, it hits home when it hits them. That's the point. So when it hits you guys, and when you want to make your voice heard, let us know. We'll help you. We'll get there. We want more people who got that voice. We want more people to go up and have that voice with, with folks. At, at, uh, I, I was just talking to um, Longworth Building, uh, the Rayburn Building. These buildings are becoming homely names, not to me, to my daughter. Because <laughs> she was like, where did you go? I said, I was at Longworth Building. Where is that? Long, long what, what? So then I said, I was explaining to her what this is. So next year when I went in, she's like, did you go to Longworth Building? <laughs> so think about it. So if, if we are going to make changes in people's lives, that's where we have to start. We have to start at homes. We have to start at work. And we have to start from you guys. So let us know what you want done so we can take it up the food chain. 
you know, we have a great website uh, where you can send us feedback, send us emails. There's, there's always people that we can get together. And if you have some specific opinions or concerns, talk to us.